Hello, everybody. Thank you again for joining our Board Governance Podcast. My name is Mark Bednarz, Head of the Risk Advisory Practice at PKF O'Connor Davies. Uh, today, I have a good friend of mine that I've known her for, for many years. Uh, Dr. Plattenberg's here with me. Uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, you know, you and I were talking about it maybe two, three months ago about one of our COSO implementations about, we, I was saying about that they have a code of ethics, which they, employees are required to sign. They have a whistleblower hotline. And I said that was probably the extent of their ethics program. And you just smiled at me. And then I asked, you know, why that smile? And you said, you know, there's a lot more stuff that they need to do. So I was wondering, maybe you can just, uh, you know, start us off by saying, why isn't that enough today? Well, having in today's environment, just having a um, whistleblower policy or code of conduct, that is kind of ancient. So in today's environment, what we are more looking at because of more issues associated with unethical behavior, we need to have more done in corporations. By having unethical behavior in companies, it could lead to reputational damage, as we have seen in the news. Um, you can lead to um, lack of competitive advantage. Um, you can also um, be fined. Most companies do not know that, but it can be fined by the federal government. Um, United States Sentencing Commission um, could come in t- into, into any type of organization and find that organization if they have an incident of unethical behavior. So today, companies, they're more interested in having something that's more effective and in place. Please. Okay, so what was also interesting is you told me you actually created a ethics and compliance program. Is that correct? Yes, I did. All right, so why is that better than just having a code of ethics and whistleblower? Okay, um, from doing my dissertation, I discovered that men tend to be more unethical than women. In oh, boy, place. here we go. Oh, yes, definitely, much more. So from doing that research, I decided to develop a ethical risk management framework, which could be effectively used in corporations today. And that goes for any organizational type, meaning government, nonprofit, for-profit, private entity, whatever. It could be used today. So um, under the guidance, the United States Sentencing Commission has the FSGO guidelines. FSGO means Federal Sentencing Guidelines for Organizations. Okay, they have seven steps which a company can implement to have an effective compliance program. Having, we'll go into those seven steps briefly, but having that program in place should still unethical behavior occurs and the government comes in, your fines could be reduced up to 95%. So if the government see that we have something in place and something should happen, your fines could be reduced. That sounds very significant. Where did you see that? Okay, if you visit the website, um, you can Google United States Sentencing Guidelines and look at the FSGO. So you saw and that yes, on their yes, website? Yes, all right, definitely. Perfect. So I invite you all to also look, in, look at that. So um, would you like to hear about some of those seven steps? Oh, please, please, definitely. Okay, so some of the seven steps, let's go through them briefly. To first, to be effective, to have an effective program in place, you have to have standards and procedures. We're not only talking your whistleblower or your code of conduct, it goes more into different standards and procedures to cover, that covers ethics, okay? So that's the first step you have. The second one, high level accountability. Tone at the top. If it's not blessed and honored by the tone at the top, it's not going to be effective. And we know the board board of directors really have the ultimate tone of the top review, right? They should be doing that. Exactly, exactly. So that's very, very, very critical. And then it sets a good example for your for employees. Right, because okay. it all cascades down, exactly. right, from the board down exactly. to the C-suites, down to the employees. Exactly. So that's very, very critical. And then, of course, you have to have your due diligence. Very Another important step for effective compliance. Um, And then effective communication. You have all the policies, the procedures, everything in place, but if it's not communicated and employees are not reminded about them, it's a problem. So here's a question. Yeah, We say there's a code of conduct. Everybody signs off on it, correct? Uh, 
do people really understand what is ethical? No, I don't think it? so. So yeah. by having the standards and procedures and probably providing training to your employees, uh -huh. okay, you have to go into depth into the program. It's just not like window washing. You have to go into all the policies and the procedures so they can understand. Because you know what? It's just like when you go somewhere and you give your long document and you just sign it without reading it. A lot of companies, when they see code of conduct and whistleblower, they just sign without really understanding it. Mm -hmm. So if an audit were to take place, the HR or whoever's in charge will say, okay, my employee sign it, but that is no longer enough. Right. Okay, so you have to have a more in-depth um, communication and training, etc. Now, another thing, so you develop the program, you have to do audit and monitoring. Very critical, okay? Once a year, it is suggested that you, employees, you could probably take a sample of employees from each department, depends on the size of a company or everybody, and you do your audit to see how much they do know about the ethics and compliance program. Now, the, um, the government would like to see that because when they come in and there's an incident takes place, they could go and probably speak to a couple of employees to see if they really understand what the ethics and compliance program is about. And another thing is enforcing the standards that you have developed consistently. Okay, employees should be aware that if something goes wrong, they commit some kind of unethical behavior, this is what is going to happen. Warning or termination or whatever policy you have set sure. in place. So that's very critical. And then finally, responding appropriately. Meaning, if something should take place, an uh, employee calls a hotline, don't think about getting to it the next three or four weeks. This is something you have to respond immediately and deal with immediately. So once again, the employees will know that this is something serious. We have this, this program in place and it's designed to respond appropriately and quickly to any incident mm -hmm. that takes place. So that's it, mm -hmm. basically, in a nutshell. So is your program agnostic so it can be used in the government, non-for-profit, uh, commercial services? Anywhere. As long as you have employees or workplace, it could be used. It doesn't matter what type of environment it is. Okay. Yeah. And what can a client expect as a deliverable? Okay, after, so we come into the company, so what we'll do, we'll look at the programs, we, we will see what is in place and so forth, and after we do our assessment, like the audit, interviewing employees and so forth, what we will do, we would actually provide, we would rate the company, so we could see what type, where they fall in their ethics and compliance program mm -hmm. and make recommendations for areas of weaknesses, of strength, if it's good, it's good. Of course, if you have a good program, sure. it would be acknowledged as well. And it should so, be. yes, yeah, so you have the seven areas. So, what we'll do, we'll rate each area mm -hmm. and make recommendations for where you could improve so it could raise your score because it is scored as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Beautifully. Well, this was very insightful. Dr. Plattenberg, thank you for coming in to talk about your ethics and compliance program. You're most welcome. Um, thanks for having me and you know, ethics and compliance is very critical today. It's a field that is blossoming, and more and more companies today are paying attention to it. They included it as part of their overall risk management program, so it is something that's here to stay. Absolutely. Blossom. Thank you. Uh, join us next time where we're going to have Jeff Haas. He's a professor of law and a longtime member of Board of Trustees for a, several mutual fund families. He'll be talking about interested director transactions and their treatment under Delaware law. Thank you again, everybody.